The U.S. has released a statement after negotiations with China. You would think that after a 90-day truce, huge meetings, lots of press, massive hype in the media, that there would be some major developments with the ongoing issues, right? They wouldn't leave the public with a big pile of nothing, would they? Well, guess again. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to talk about the trade issues between the U.S. and China. We're going to look at Apple. We are going to look at several economic indicators. I have a lot to cover, so let's begin by taking a look at the markets themselves. Today has been another volatile one. The beginning of the day started up high, it fell into the negative, and then it continued on its trend into the positive territory. You can see the U.S. markets, S&P, NASDAQ, and the Dow Jones all in positive positive territory today. The Dow Jones is up about 100 points as of this time. The market has been trading on the fake positivity coming out of the trade issues. I'm going to show you the actual statement that was put out by the US so you could see it for yourself. This is an article that coincides with that report. US trade negotiators will report back to the White House before taking their next steps. The statement comes after mid-level trade talks between China and the US concluded. So this is the actual statement itself and we'll read some of it here together but essentially what we are looking at at this time is nothing can you believe it after all of this hype nothing really happened i'll show you the only good piece of information that actually came out of it okay so what we're looking at is a conclusion they went over they had the meetings they thought that there would be some sort of progress but ultimately it was just back and forth there was nothing concrete that formed from this meeting that we know of at this point so they brought out this statement this is all we have and so maybe there'll be some further information later they said trade talks went well but what exactly does that mean all we have here is the same information from before but nothing actually put into place so the market's trading on this positivity and they're already pricing in something happening when nothing has I'll mention two points from this near the top it says officials will discuss ways to achieve fairness reciprocity and balance in trade relations between our two countries that ultimately is just more talking back and forth distractions and filler more towards the bottom this is the actual piece of positive news the talks also focused on China's pledge to purchase substantial amounts of agriculture, energy, manufactured goods, and other products and services from the United States. So that is what they said before. And then in December, they didn't buy any soybeans at all. I think it was December or perhaps November. R regardless, we're looking at that data, the official actual documented fact, instead of just rhetoric, instead of just talk. And it seems like there's the two tales that that's happening right now. You're hearing one in the media and then you're seeing the data and it tells a different story. So this is the information that the media projects to you. I like to give you the other side of the story, but you can choose what you want to take in. Right now, as of this recording, we are seeing Apple into the positive territory, even though every single piece of information has been bad out of this company for the last little while. It's up to $153 a share, up 1.7 five percent a lot of negative press about this company a lot of information has come out about this but they still have recovered from their lowest point their market cap is sitting now at 731 billion it's a long stretch away from 1.1 trillion where it was previously so i wanted to give you this piece of information that was not really covered in the media much but i think it is significant it's a translated article it's not going to give you exactly but we'll get a little piece of the puzzle in in order to stimulate the desire of Chinese users to purchase and increase the popularity of the newly released models, Apple began to adjust the channel price simply to cut prices. So as of January 9th, they found out that these dealers received US price adjustment information on their newest models. So that tells you right there that they are willing to cut the price a bit, at least in China, where the market is really suffering. So that tells us what's happening with this company. They've slashed all of their expectations and the analysts have slashed them as well none of them right now are at a buy from the last time i checked and you're seeing everybody at basically a hold a wait and see moment at this time and now for a bit of garbage to fill your day the market thinks the federal reserve won't be hiking rates this year what a complete joke when you hear this information you should be 
immediately skeptical because we know that the market is wrong every single time and they adjust accordingly after the problems arise just like we saw in October just like November and December all of those three months we saw how bad analysts were at making their ridiculous predictions and this is a bunch of propaganda yet again when US stocks posted their worst December since the Great Depression traders put plenty of the blame on actions by the Fed and that other favorite scapegoat computerized trading and of course that's what the problems were but now it seems clear that the market was mostly anticipating what has actually happened in recent days companies are cutting profit forecasts and trying to temper expectations for earnings growth this year after a big 2018 what a complete pile of garbage this is the writer was hopefully told to put out this propaganda and this isn't actually someone's true belief because this is an embarrassment this is a true embarrassment and i feel sorry for everybody that believes this so the federal reserve which is by far the most important factor in terms of what happens in the stock market in the financial system isn't actually the reason why we had a bad december a bad november and a bad october no it's because of companies cutting their forecast what a joke Jeffrey Gundlach said that the current buy the dip mentality reminds him of the complacency that took place in the 2007-2008 credit market right before the great financial crisis. There's potential for that here because the panic in December was a buying panic, not a selling panic. You never saw the VIX truly spike the way you want for a panic. You want to see that thing over 40. It never made it to 40. And the VIX, we know what's happening with it. We know exactly what's happening with it when we see number one that Powell had previously admitted there's a short position on the VIX number two you just look at the daily events when things were going crazy the VIX would shoot up maybe two maybe three points and then you would have a day which looked positive amongst a series of bad days and the VIX would drop down like five or more points it's fake and the market needs to realize that sooner rather than later hopefully but I shouldn't hold my breath one of the largest home builders said it can't give a forecast because the market is so uncertain what kind of time do we live in today that nothing makes sense that businesses are slashing their forecasts that the Federal Reserve is saying we don't know what to expect that all of the biggest hedge funds are losing all of the markets right now are dependent on one central bank to hand out easy money and there's still the euphoria around it. It shouldn't make sense like this, but this has become the new reality. Nothing makes sense, so buy the dip, basically is what's happening. Stashing some cash in savings account used to be the monetary equivalent of stuffing money in a mattress. Those days are over. In 2018, high yielding savings accounts outperformed the stock market for the first time in over a decade. All right, so now we're looking at a time in which these high yielding savings accounts actually brought people into the positive territory versus the S&P 500, which had actually lost money all throughout 2018. This doesn't matter for a lot of people because they only invested in FANG stocks and FANG stocks apparently never never ever 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 lose so that's the story that they want to believe and it starts with once upon a time and ends with happily ever after the end Plunging rates sparks 23.5% spike in mortgage applications after unusually weak holidays. A sharp drop in interest rates to the lowest level since April sparked a mini boom in mortgage refinancing. Think about this. People are thinking to themselves, okay, I have to get this opportunity right now. We have to get in right now before the situation gets worse. Let's put our money in. And they're going to get in at a point where, yes, it's come off the peak. There's no doubt about that. And certainly we may see sales actually slowing the dip that was happening we saw that cratering that was going on or a flat lining in certain areas this could pick up slightly because we've seen the markets now going to worry mode but nobody really knows what's going to happen all i know is that interest rates play a pivotal role in what happens in the housing market as well as the equities as well as fixed income and so on 
Stock plus bond market capitalization as a percentage of nominal GDP. This has hit a record. I've never seen this one like this, where the stock market plus the bond market as a percentage of the GDP looks to me like we've gone and accelerated far, far beyond the average. In fact, the average historically, this is going back to the 1940s, was 120%. Today, it exceeds 260%. So perhaps you could say, look, we're living in a different time. It's not the way it was before. But even if we take the last, let's say, 30, 40 years, we're still so far overvalued. It's not even anywhere near where it was before. And that tells us something about where we are living in today. We're living in the clouds. We are living in a time in which reality doesn't play a part in the normal everyday factors. I've seen a lot of BS in the markets and people in the financial industry and the corruption and the theft from individuals that has taken place and it's gone too far we're going to see a worse scenario unfolding in the coming years and the coming months but we'll have to be patient as it all takes place and just to finish the video off, I think it would be important to mention what's happening in the UK. UK car sales have fallen at the fastest rate since the world was plunging into the Great Recession a decade ago. Car registration slid by 6.8% last year. In addition to this, we are seeing the housing prices in areas like London coming down. Obviously, Brexit is playing an issue here. It's just the uncertainty. It's just that businesses don't know what to expect. Individuals don't know what to expect. They're thinking, will the asset prices fall dramatically? maybe I'll just wait a little bit and this has been pushed further and further and further and actually the longer it takes the worse it is it looks like there's gonna be a no deal coming around and that's gonna be disastrous to the markets in the short term I think long term it's extremely bad for them to stay in that's my opinion however but we're looking at this now coming out of the UK which should have a vibrant financial system because it's so focused on that and instead we are seeing a lot a lot of weakness right now this could could turn around and be beneficial in some way. I just don't see it as being a possibility for the foreseeable future. So I believe that we could experience further declines in housing. We could see a slowdown in the economy even more than already we've noted here, whether it's in the cars or any other part of the economy as well. It just seems to be a constant widespread slowdown for individuals in the UK. If you are in the UK, please let me know what you're seeing as a result of all of this over the last couple years. I'll end the video there. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, when you comment on these videos, you're supporting me. You're supporting the Money GPS. So I do appreciate that very much. If you don't know what to say, just put anything related to the video. It doesn't matter. Just one or two words. I'll try to give my thumbs up on this. I'll try to you know go through all the comments as I do on a daily basis. I spend a lot of time every single day trying to get back to as many people as I can. It's very difficult because there's just so many, but trust me I'm reading as many of them as I possibly can almost all of them in fact so I really do appreciate that thank you and last but not least if you want the financial education that you were not taught in school these two books have everything that you need you can get all the details at the link in the description below if you're interested in the audiobook version you can get that at themoneygps.com